Ladies and gentlemen, we are live here today with the Politicking Network and Show. I am your host, Riddell Resistance Norman, and we are here giving you all the news you can use. Man, hey, we are here live at the parlor, 705 St. Joseph Street, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Today we have a special guest in the house, man. Hey, it's going to be a nice show, man. We're going to give you a lot of hot topics, and we're going to give you the, all the educational stuff you need as well. So most definitely, I want you to give a round of applause for our special guest, Darius Lights. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Most being here. Man, go ahead and give the people your name and let them know you know how to pronounce your name. So it's Darius, man. It's, uh, oftentimes people see the extra D in the name. They, you know, they call it Darius, the Darius, Darius. But yes, it is correctly pronounced. Uh, Darius Lance. Most definitely, most definitely. And uh, I know this brother, man, I've been knowing this brother since he was a young kid, man. I graduated with his older brother, and uh, he comes from good stock, and I vouch for this brother, man. It's going to be a wonderful show, and I've been knowing this brother for a long time. So, man, I just want to salute this brother to what he's doing. Uh, We're going to get into this on the show, so let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, go ahead and let the people know, uh, you know, your occupation and what you do. All right, yeah. So again, my name is Darius Landis. Uh, I'm an educator. I'm also a lawyer right here in East Baton Rouge Parish. Um, I went to Glen Oaks High School. Uh, I just give you a background of all of my schools that I went to. So uh, <clears throat> I started off at Forest Heights, which is now a uh, uh, Blue Ribbon School in East Baton Rouge Parish School District. Um, I also went to Glen Oaks Middle, which is now shut down, and I also attended Glen Oaks High School. Most definitely, man. Uh, where did you get your secondary education from? Uh, secondary education, I attended. Uh, well, actually, I started off at BRCC after I did two years there. I transferred to Southern University. Um, I went to Southern University in the fall and spring, and also in the summer times, I was doing uh, educational research with the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign through the Ronald E. McNair Scholars Program, which I was uh, very pleased and blessed to be a part of. Uh, after finishing there and achieving my uh, Bachelor's of Arts, I went on to Southern University Law Center, where I uh, graduated. Uh, uh, while there, I was a part of SBA. I was the Evening Division President, and I was also a part of several other groups uh, while on campus. After I finished there, I rode right back again, and uh, now I'm currently getting my Master's in Education. I'll be graduating from uh, Southern University uh, this fall, December 2018. Most definitely, man. Let's just applaud this young brother, man. Thank His you, resume you, is immaculate. Man, I salute you with that, man. That's a lot of schooling that you got there, yes. <laughs> That's a whole lot of yes. schooling. Uh, so, uh, jumping into it, man, uh, with your attorney work, what uh, exactly uh, do you do with your attorney work? So, uh, right now, I currently, I don't focus more on the legal side. The things that I try to help people with is informing them of their rights, their legal rights in particular situations, getting pulled over by cops, knowing how the right procedures, uh, knowing how to get things uh, expunged off their record. Uh, things basically that have adverse effects in uh, the poor, disadvantaged communities. That's that's the areas I always try to touch on, and that's one of the reasons why I became an educator because I want to come back and get back to my community, the same community that helped me and molded me to be the person that I am today. Uh, I'm a product of my environment, but I want people to know that the environment does not make you; you make yourself. No matter what the circumstances are, there are no excuses at this point. Uh, it's all about you know just finding your groove, finding your grind, and just sticking to it. Because at the end of that rain at the end of that tunnel, uh, you always gonna find success. You just have to find what lane uh, to get that success or how you achieve that success. And that's why I want to come back and show people the road. And all they have to do is travel the path. Man, most definitely, man. I think that's so impressive. Uh, you spoke about being an educator as well. Yes, I yes, want to uh, definitely dive into that. Uh, okay. uh, what grades do you teach? Um, so I've been in education now for the past five years. Uh, I've taught grades as low as uh, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade. Um, I've also taught uh, in high school, so I taught on the 12th grade level right now. I'm actually uh, an English teacher, teaching high school. Uh, so I deal with working with young people every single day. I deal with hearing young people's voices every single day. And in hearing their voices, again, that's more the reason too that motivated me to want to get involved more in education, uh, not just in the classroom, not just inside of the school buildings, but on the policy side as well. Because those are the things that dictate uh, the way schools are run and the way that students learn while inside of those schools. Most definitely, man. Uh, 
And as far as, you know, being an attorney and an educator, uh, you know, we spoke about you helping out people in certain situations in the school system and, you know, legally as well. Could you elaborate a little bit more about how you specifically help out the young kids and adults that need legal advice or educational advice with the situations that, they, that, may, arise, that may arise, you know, during their educational stint or a legal stint that they're dealing with after school? Okay, so I'll just say, uh, while I was in undergrad, this is when I was a Ronald E. McNair scholar and I was at the University of Illinois, I had the opportunity to deep dive into several different pedagogies and one of which that came up was hip hop pedagogy. And uh, one of the main principles that it focused on was cultural res uh, responsiveness. And then, no, that's, that's basically knowing the culture of the school that you're in and also knowing the population of the students that are inside of that school. So uh, just using that uh, as I guess a balancing tool that helped to shape how I, what type, the type of uh, educator that I want to be. Uh, when I walked into the classroom, I knew that I wanted to be somebody that could connect with students. I know I wanted to be somebody who students could look up to as a role model, but also someone who they could respect. Um, and, uh, and following that pedagogy, what it teaches you is to build the relationships. Because as a, as a great, long-time uh, educator once said, who's now deceased, and may she rest in peace, uh, students do not learn from people who they do not like. And that's a very, very true statement. No student is going to respect, no student wants to learn or be around someone who they do not like. So I always try to be someone who comes down to their level to a sense and try to understand what they go through on a regular basis because for a lot of them, I always tell my personal story to them and, uh, and once they hear my story, they're like, wow, and you still did all of this? Yes, because there, are no, there aren't any excuses. Yeah, what it is is just having the patience, is having that uh, that drive, to, that rigor to want to go out there and do more and have more for yourself, so that you can provide for your family and yourself. And those are the basic tools I try to make sure I leave them with every time I walk out of the classroom in those schools. Most definitely, man. I would love to be a student in one of those classes, man. I, it's pretty I, fun. I will say that the students love me. I love them too. But they know one thing. Uh, I'm real big on management, so that's one of my strong suits is classroom management. So uh, I tell all my students from day one. The respect you give is the respect that you will get back. Um, we can have fun, uh, we can uh, learn a lot, but in the same sense, when you come inside of this classroom, all of the foolishness has to stay outside because what we don't want to happen is uh, feeling as though when we come inside of the classroom, it's playtime. And it's not the case at all. Again, we can have fun. I can be respectful to them. I can, uh, you know, I try to make sure I stay up on all the ladies' music because they, they love dancing. And, you know, that's, that's one of the biggest craze right now is dancing and things like that. So uh, I always try to stay up with them and everything that they have going on so that I can relate to them on that level. And so they understand that, yeah, Mr. D is cool, but at the same time, yeah, he does expect a lot from us. Oh, definitely, man. And speaking of cool, man, I know they be wearing some cool stuff in school <laughs> these days. So let's go ahead and, uh, you know, a lot of these kids be getting their stuff from Images Apparel, man. And, uh, you know, another one of our sponsors, Bill Life uh, Clothing. Shout and out to them. Shout out to those brothers, shout man. Out. A lot of these kids shopping over there. So go ahead, you know, if you're trying to get flat, go over there and holler at Images Apparel at 6230 Florida Boulevard. And also look at Bill Life Clothing. You can uh, purchase that at Images Apparel. And also you can purchase that through BillLife.com. Man, they got the hottest gear in town, so make sure that you get with those fellas, man, so you can be fly like the high schools, like my brother, Mr. Lainus, you know, teaches, you know. Um, jumping right back into it, uh, what high school do you teach at? Uh, so, for purposes of privacy, I can't reveal that, most definitely. Uh, but I am right here in EBR Parish. Uh, anybody that wants to come out of my high school, anybody that wants to come and, you know, just talk to me, that information can be uh, given to you at a later right. time. But yeah, th just uh, for privacy purposes, not that I don't want to reveal, but, you know, for the school's sake, I can't reveal that. Most definitely. Most definitely. And only because right now I'm currently inside of a school board race. Most definitely. So let's go ahead and uh, let's talk about that a little. Uh, I know that uh, the district that you come from, you know, you're real passionate about <laughs> it. You know? Most definitely. We both from that district, and yes. man, I, I, I see the, the, the fire in your eyes with it. Yes, yes, yes. So let's talk about a possible campaign run. I saw the yeah. Facebook post yesterday yeah. where your name is in the ring. Yes, 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 sir. So yesterday, uh, yes, I did qualify to become a, a candidate for District 2 EBR School Board. Um, I'm really excited. Man, I've been excited uh, since before qualifying because I was just so ready to get out there and start really, really talking to people, um, hearing their voices, and not just the parents, not just the older folk, but the, literally the younger people too, you know? Knowing how they feel can help shape 
and mold policy in such a strong way. And that's what I feel like we haven't been doing enough of. You know, we expect to want to teach students, but we don't expect to listen to them and learn from them. So it has to be, uh, it has to be, uh, I would say, 50-50. Yeah. You know, at the very yeah. least, 75-25. Yeah. You have to meet them somewhere, hear how they feel, if you really want uh, to know what the problems are, what they're going through, and how you can uh, get them to turn around. Most definitely. So let's talk about that district that you're running for. Okay. Uh, I think Verita, uh, Verita Lee uh, is over that district. Yes. Uh, I know her real personal, but uh, it looks like it's going to be a good race. Oh, it's definitely going to be a good race. Most definitely. I want people to know, I'm sorry, I just want the people to know that I have nothing against Miss Lee on a personal level. She's a really, really sweet lady. However, I do have questions about uh, the current leadership that we have on the school board, and it's not just with her, it's with our entire board, including uh, our, our current uh, superintendent of the schools. You know, I just think it's ridiculous. You have about 80 schools in East Baton Rouge Parish, yet almost half of those schools are failing. You have uh, of those 34 schools that are ha or have been deemed academically unacceptable, 80% of those schools are in poor, disadvantaged communities, much like North Baton Rouge, much like Glen Oaks. You know, when I look at Glen Oaks High School, and when we went to Glen Oaks High School, it was a mirror image of what it currently is today. We had, uh, what, about 1,200 students inside the building then. Now, Glen Oaks has uh, less than 500 students inside this building. Um, when you look at uh, what a school is academically, the school has been uh, consistently receiving a, a school performance grade of a D. And if it continues, they're going to be at risk of being taken over by the state, much like other schools within the district. You know, if I can count off hand, man, uh, how many schools we've lost? We lost Lanier Elementary. Uh, we lost uh, Brown, uh, not Browns, but we lost uh, White Hills just currently. Uh, Banks Elementary, uh, which that's another school everybody agree to lose, and that's another problem for me because that school has been a con it's consistently received an F letter grade from the state uh, for school performance. Right. Yet now they're talking about taking this school and putting it inside of those high schools building. And and making that our uh, middle school component. It doesn't make any sense. Right. Again, as I just said, if middle school, high school is a D and you're gonna take a middle school that's an F, how does that help us in terms of feeding? Yeah. You know, how does that help us in terms of pushing these students? How does it help us in terms of moving those uh, measurements and using those standards so that we can start achieving more success at the school? It doesn't help us at all. I think it's backwards thinking uh, policy. And again, that's one of the reasons why I'm in this race. So, I, that's so that we can uh, make the right decisions for those types of schools, not just for Glenmore High School, but so that we can get another middle school component there in the area because we don't have one. We lost Glenmore Middle School and it's been hurting us. We have a lot of charters in the area which is not necessarily a bad thing, but those charters are failing just as much as our traditional schools. So we have to turn something around. Most well, definitely. I love what you're talking about. Uh, speaking of District 2 that you're running for, yes. what does it to, uh, overall comprise of? All right, so you have, uh, in District 2 you have Glen Oaks, which I think is the heart of the district. Uh, it, it extends as far as up to Zachary because you have Northeast in the district and that's out in Chaneville. Um, it includes parts of Banks, uh, parts of Baker, which is the Brownfields area, and then it comes right back around Glen Oaks uh, all the way to Greenwell Springs Road. Most definitely, man, and uh, I think that area is near and dear to us. So, yes. man, my brother, I, I think you got my support, man. Yes, like man. I, I, love, I love what you're talking about, but uh, let's just give the people, you know, that don't know exactly, you know, because I know what you're made of, I know the pedigree, and I know what, what stock that you come mm -hmm. from. But uh, let's let the people know, you know, as far as your campaign promises, what do you plan on doing with District 2? Well, I can tell you this right now. On yesterday, I announced this. Uh, actually, when I let everyone know that I am running, my very first campaign pledge is to take my East Baton Rouge Parish uh, school board stipend, which is about a thousand dollars every month. I want to create twelve one thousand dollars scholarships, and I want to make District Two the first scholarship school district. And what I mean by that is, if you come to District Two and you work hard, I want to reward those students that work hard. All they have to do is be a graduating senior, have a two point five grade point average and uh, commit to doing at least uh, three community service projects. If you can do that, uh, going to college, you can use the money to uh, pay for college tuition, buy books. Um, if you want to go into workforce development, you can use the money to uh, pay for your fees, your trainings, uh, so that you can go right into working. Or uh, if you want to, you can take the $1,000 and you can create your own small business. This is, these are the three 
uh, focal areas that we want to focus on. We want to focus on student success either in college, student success uh, finding jobs, or student success creating jobs within our school district. Most definitely, man. I think that's so important that we plant that seed in them to become young business yes, owners. Yes, yes, yes. And, and you know, I love college. I love what college, you know, the opportunities that college, mm -hmm. you know, brings us as a people. Mm -hmm. But being a business owner puts us at a at a pivot that we really need. Yes, right absolutely. Now, especially in our community. And I salute you with that program. And I am. Uh, here and I am committing myself right here on the Politic and Networking Show to helping you out in every aspect. Thank you, my brother. Because we're we gonna need a lot of help. You know, most it's gonna be a long race. It's gonna be a long three months, and but I'm looking forward to it. And as many people that want to get involved, there's no problem. You can go uh, on the Facebook page. Is uh, Darius Lance for East Baton Rouge School Board District Two. Um, if you can go on there, you'll get uh, updates of events. Whenever you're gonna see us out doing things in the community, you're gonna get all of the information. One of the main things I do, uh, something that I just recently uh, came up with was doing a walk and talk. So, you know, right now they've uh, deemed Louisiana to be one of the most obese states in the United States of America. Uh, so I said we have the Dunn's High School track there. I'm going to pick a, a day throughout the week and all the uh, citizens have to do or the residents have to do is show up, come walk with me. We're going to walk the track together. We're going to get in shape together and we're going to talk uh, education. We're going. I want to hear what you want. I want to know what it is that we need in the district. I want to know and also bring your students. Bring them too. I'll, I'll su uh, supply the water. Uh, I supply the, uh, the sports drinks, anything you need to get you there so that we can discuss education, any type of innovative way that we can reach people, that's what I want to do. That's what this campaign is all about. Most definitely. And I think that we need new, different, young yes. ways to, you know, revitalize our educational system. We need young blood. You know, I, I commend you. We need young black males to yes. commit themselves to helping with education and our youngsters in our community. And you know what? I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm glad you did, that you just said that because currently right now on East Baton Rouge Parish School Board, um, we have no black male representation at all. Absolutely none. Our last black male uh, was... Uh, School board member uh, Tarver Smith, who was recently elected to uh, city court judge. Shout out to uh, Judge Tarver, he's a really, really, really cool guy. Um, but right now we don't have any representation. But when you look at the dynamics or the demographics of our current school system, I want to say about 70 to 80 percent of our school system are African Americans. And the most affected students within our school system are young black males. Yet we have no black males on school board to help drive them, give them direction to help lead them. So I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here for all of them, man. Most definitely. And we need those young black yes. positive role models in our school system. Like this young brother just said, our school system is 80% black. Yes. We need positive black role models in our schools that are males. I love what my females do. I'm not taking anything away from them. No, no, but no. there is a shortage of positive young black men in our educational system. So we need to support this brother and we need to get on the bandwagon and we need to get him in office. Thank you. Thank you. I, I love the ideas, what he has, and I'm on board fully uh, with that uh, volunteering. Most definitely, let's uh, segue that into uh, my third annual Back to School giveaway, oh, yeah. which Mr. Lanus will be attending. I will be, so please, if you, if you come out there, I'll be out there. I'm, I want to talk to you, I want to hear your voice, but at the same time, uh, come out and, and come get some supplies for your students. Even if you have supplies already, come out and come talk to the community. This is the kind of conversations, these are the types of events that we need to have so everybody, so everyone can come together for far too long. Throughout, all throughout North Baton Rouge, we've been so signaled. You know, when you start hearing about the communities, that's that's what people want to affiliate with. You know, I'm from Glen Oaks, I'm from Zion City, I'm from Banks, I'm from Scott. All of that makes no sense. Because in the same sense, we are all in the same city, and we are all suffering from the same problems. So it makes no sense for us to add more problems to our city. It's time to come together, it's time to, uh, to, to stop the violence, and it's time to really start honing in so we can start getting uh, the right assets within our area so that we can become the next great city, so that North Baton Rouge can become a part and look the part like the rest of uh, Baton Rouge Parish, like downtown, like uh, places in the southeastern part of, uh, of uh, Baton Rouge. Yeah, across Florida Boulevard. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. 
So if you want to talk to this brother, he will definitely be out there and he will, I will make sure that he has the microphone to talk to the public thank and you, all of the you. educators out there because his voice is so important and he need to be heard. Thank you. We need to be listening to this young brother thank you. and I'm supporting this young brother. So let's go ahead and uh, let the people know when the election date is so, so we can get them out there to vote. The election date is going to be November 6th. This is going to be November 6th this year. If I'm not mistaken, actually that falls on a Tuesday. So it's not your average or your regular election day is going to be a midterm election so it's going to be uh you can expect high turnout uh because you, you got, people are going to be electing uh new u.s uh representatives uh people are going to be electing judges people are going to be electing uh school board you know and these are very important seats when you start talking about local politics people don't take it as serious as on the national stage you know when you think about people running for governor people take that more serious than the uh school board or city council but these are the boards that make the most uh moves and make the most impact within our city within our parish you know with this last uh, we can go back to february um when, when school boards have these talks about um creek uh uh, allocating over 400 million dollars to go towards school construction. When you looked at the majority of the money, when 75 percent of the money of the funds went south of Florida Boulevard, only 25 percent of those funds went north of Florida Boulevard. Yet we have again the most failing schools in North Baton Rouge. We have the the, more, the most problem with problems with our school system in North Baton Rouge. Yet we are not getting the equitable resources that we need to really move these schools. So. I, again, that's why I want to get in there. I want to be the person that can go on that board and give the, and be the voice of the people. I want to be that person that brings you transparency. I want to be the person that brings you accountability. I want to be the person that brings you the truth. You know, when you start hearing about politics, that's when people start, you know, twisting the words and calling it politics. We want to get rid of the tricks and we want to really uh, bring the people back. We want to do it for the people because, you know, we were made by the people. Most definitely. For the people, by the people. So most definitely, you heard it here on the Politic and Networking Show first. Man, we gave it to you live today, man. Uh, most definitely, before we get up out of here, let the people know how to get in touch with you, how to donate to your campaign, and how to get in touch with, you know, people that if you needed to get in touch with Mr. Lanus, how would they go about doing it? Okay. How could they donate to you? Yes, sir. So they are on Facebook. Yes, you guys can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, if you if you just need to get, get in contact with me immediately, you can also email me at lannisforschools.org. Land, I'm sorry, Lannis for Schools uh, at gmail.org. Again, that's Lannis, L A N U S, for the number four schools at gmail.com. And most definitely, I want to hit this before we get out of here. Uh, if you are having, if your child is having any trouble in school as far as a wrongful conviction, as far as being accused of something in school, then there is a discrepancy. Mr. Lannis is an attorney and he looks into situations like that. So yes. if it is a just situation, he will look into that and he will give it his utmost attention. Absolutely. And even if it's not, you know, anything that's dealing with the uh, discipline within the school, if you feel like your child is inside an unsafe school building, please, I want to know. These are the things that I fight for. Making sure that we have quality schools and make sure that we have quality instruction taking place inside of the classrooms every single day. If that is not taking place, I want to know so that I can put that word out, so that I can join and help you get the word out so that we are making sure our students are getting everything that they deserve inside the classroom because they deserve more and they deserve better. Most definitely. And before we get out of here as well, I want to uh, go ahead and uh, do a segment of the show that I normally do. Uh, I hate to do it, but uh, let's go ahead and shout out Dominique Pate that lost her life this week. Uh, let's pray for her family and her kids. Yes. Uh, you know, it's a situation where this young lady lost her life. She was very young. So let's just uh, keep her near and dear to our heart and uh, keep her in our prayers. Uh, also, let's go ahead and... Uh, you know, with that situation, let's just go ahead and holler at our sponsors, Images Apparel and uh, Veal Life Clothing. You can holler at Veal Life Clothing at, uh, you know, veallife.com. Support your people. Support your people. And you can also pick that up at Images Apparel. And you can holler at Images Apparel at 6230 Florida Boulevard. And you can also get with them in Gonzales on Burnside. So make sure you get with them. Uh, make sure you get with us August the 4th for the back to school giveaway 5 to 7 30 and we'll be there Most definitely Ms. Langs will be out there talking kissing baby shaking hands. Yes. <laughs> uh, taking that work. Yes. 
Uh, man, thank you for joining us today, man. Ms. Lynch, thank you for coming in. Thank you, man. my brother, man. It's always a pleasure. Anytime you want me to come back, I'm always here. Anytime you have any events, let me know. Uh, I just love being out in the community, man. I just love being out talking to people. I love hearing uh, other people's stories, you know, and also sharing my story with people because, you know, that's where the power lies, you know, and hearing what, e what, what each other came from, you know, because that's when you get to know each other better. And I, can, I think that uh, if we got to know each other better, or if we got to know each other better, there'd be less violence going on, man. Most definitely. So let's increase the peace and uh, check us out on August the 4th, man. Thank you for coming in. Thank Appreciate you for joining it. us here on the Politic and Networking Show, 705 St. Joseph Street, downtown Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Signing out, man, with Daryl Resistance Norman. Thank you, man. Appreciate it.